Hello, and welcome back to the Scale Modeling Cafe. My name is Jamie, and welcome to part two of Edward's S199 in 172nd scale. As the nature of the title suggests, we're going to start with the cockpit. So a couple of holes needed to be drilled for part of the opening mechanism. And after that, it was on with the photo etched rudder pedals, which replaced the kit parts. I'm not entirely sure these are completely necessary because it's a very small aeroplane with a very small cockpit and they're somewhat hidden underneath the instrument panel, but they do lift the detail. Then it was just a matter of adding some of the plastic parts now, so the bottom of the seat where the pilot's parachute slash cushion goes, and then other various bits and pieces. It's actually a really nicely detailed cockpit and it really bodes well for, hopefully, the F, G and K series that are coming along in 72nd scale. So just using the ammo extra thin cement, again, my kind of go-to cement. And now it's your personal choice. How much of the photo etch that comes in this profi pack do you want to use? So the map, I'm assuming it's the map stowage, on the right hand fuselage half that can get removed but actually on the left hand fuselage half and the throttle lever I elected not to do that I thought it might be a little bit messy to remove all that stuff nice and cleanly and this is the oxygen gauge and the doll's eye the doll's eye is the sort of blinker if you like that goes white when you breathe in so that one needs removing, as does the, um, I don't quite know what this is. I'm sure someone might tell me in the description below. On the right hand side there, some various control, you know, it's a control panel of, of sort. Now into the photo etch. Now bear in mind this is 70 second scale, so really fiddly. So I just used the tweezers and my thumbnail to fold up the new map bin. And actually, this is, I think this is worth doing this bit. It, uh, it does add that little bit of finesse, even though it is really fiddly. So just using the tweezers to manipulate it, make sure everything is square, and you can see how tiny it is. My hands aren't that big. Let me take a glove size eight. And there we go, teeny tiny map bin. Obviously that needs glowing onto the gluing rather on the right hand fuselage half. So a little drop of super glue and that can be placed in. And then we can add the other separate plastic parts. It's just glued in with liquid cement. So a little bit of cement first, put it in place, and then I just run around the join with that extra thin, again using that really fine brush. It's really precise. And I really, I really love the love that brush. It's super useful. That's the fuselage half complete. Well, plastic bits anyway, and a little bit of the photo etch. Obviously I'm not going to do the coloured photo etch quite yet. And then it was just this last little bit down here. This holds the one half of the trim wheel, which is really nicely done, nice and colorful on the etch fret. So that goes on later after painting. And talking of painting, so because there is some photo etch there, I just elected to use some Mr. Surfacer 1500 as a primer. I guess it's not strictly necessary, but with the little few bits of metal there I thought it was worth it and you can see how detailed the cockpit sort of floor and back is with all those other little bits on in place okay time to put some color down and I decided actually to do a black undercoat to try and get some four shadows I wanted to increase the contrast just because it is RLM 66 it is dark and it is very small 
So MRP black went down first and that's nice and glossy. So that's going to help with washes later on. So that was just misted on. And as you can see, it's, it's really shiny. And not forgetting the bulkhead behind. I've forgotten that so many times on one nine kits. But I'm really pleased that I uh, that I remembered this time. And as you can see, glued onto a little bit of cocktail stick. And now for the highlight. So MRP again in white. And you'll be able to see there. I've just removed the cap from the nozzle of the airbrush. That's going to mean I can get in there really nice and close and really fine pattern. It's really nice and accurate. And all I'm doing here is trying to spray the highlights and just on the flat areas and that's just going to make it a little bit lighter but I'm not going to do the seat pan or the seat back that is going to be done in Alclad Duralumin because I'm going to use the hairspray on that so yeah that was just painted in silver and that is the undercoat complete Okay, now for the RLM66, and once again, I'm using MRP, and this is just, you can see how thin it is, and this just gets misted over so the pre-shading can show through. I really, I, I don't normally do pre-shading, if I'm honest. I find post-shading, you get a lot more control, but I am going to post-shade this as well. So this is all about building up the layers. And you can see, actually, it leaves quite a nice effect. And again, nice and shiny, so it's going to take a wash really well. But before all that, I've got some ammo dry brush paint in white. And I'm just going to exaggerate all these highlights. This isn't the end of the process. Don't panic. <laughs> Yeah, one source says that these cockpits may have been RLM02, but the instructions called out for dark grey, so I went with that. So after the dry brushing, it's another mist coat of the RLM66, just to blend it in and not back that white, because it is way too much, obviously. But it gives, I think, a really nice effect. It really catches all that sharp raised detail really nicely. Now for the cockpit tub. So that's just quite a soft brush I'm using. And just allowing the all the ridges just to sort of catch. And then there we are again, just going in with a little bit more RLM 66. And you can see how quick it is. I'm not waiting for any paint to dry or anything like that. You don't need to. You just go straight in over the top. Okay, now for some highlights. So I've got RLM 66 in the colour cup mixed with a bit of RLM 02. And I'm just going to spray in the sort of large areas uh, primarily and the flat areas just to enhance the sort of shadows. And again, on the seat. And it's quite difficult to do on the, on the cockpit floor. Now, I had put down a coat of hairspray over the Duralumin and now I'm just going in with a cut down, really old brush. I've had that brush for about 20 years and some water. And I'm just going to activate the hairspray underneath. And what that'll do is that'll lift up the top coat, which is nice and dry and create those nice big chips. Okay, now for the hand painting. So I've already painted the black bits. 
So there's a little control box on the right hand side and the top of the control column, the hand grip. And I'm just going in with a rust tone and just to simulate leather of the gator. And a black wash. So this is Tamiya. And I've not used it before. So I thought I'd just have a go. And I'm going to do a couple of washes. So that was just the initial wash. And then that was cleaned up. And then I could go in with the detail painting. So the oxygen regulator was painted blue with an undercoat of white. And just looking at a few refer reference... I can't get my words to help. Reference photos. Uh, this is the oxygen... Um, hose that the pilot actually plugs into so that's affixed to the wall and I just assumed that was blue as well I, I might be wrong but it just adds a little bit of color into the cockpit and now for the silver bits so the coupling on the hose where the pilot's actually going to plug in his oxygen hose and then just a few of the little sort of connectors and things like that and all this will just add to lift the detail really and then almost like a wet dry brush to pick out the I don't know if they're circuit breakers or switches on this panel but I just find that dry brush it, it, it doesn't really work sometimes so just almost with a wet brush and just stroking it down just allowing the uh, the switches to pick up the paint Once all that's done, we can move on to the colour photo etch. So this is the the oxygen gauge and the the doll's eye that blinks every time you breathe in. And then this control panel goes on. So a little bit of super glue, and then I just with a scalpel blade just touch the uh, photo etch part, and I use that to just place it. There we go. And that colour photo, which looks quite neat, I think. Definitely worth doing. So here's the trim wheel uh, in the colour photo etch. That's really awesome, but it's it's half the size of the trim wheel that's moulded into the sidewall, which I don't know is correct. And I didn't bother painting the, the trim wheel on the sidewall, but, but that's a really nice little piece of photo etch, that. Nice and colourful. And then another wash, so I moved to my uh, my go-to really, which is the ammo of MIG and ammo wash. And no gloss coat required because the MRP paints are, are nice and glossy. And it's just a question of touching the wash. And the capillary action will go around and it kind of gets sucked into all those details really. And you can see they're on the on the cannon cover. You just touch it, and um, it uh, it kind of floods into all the recesses and all the nooks and crannies, and it, and it's really nice. So here on the on the left hand side, wall, you can see the the throttle and everything is all being picked out in black. And now the right hand fuselage half and it's a little bit more liberal on this side just because it's there's quite a bit more detail on there really so a lot more was put on and then if, if there is a little bit too much it, it's quite easy just to dry the brush off and just kind of wick it into the brush off the uh, off the plastic and then when it's dry we can just go in and clean it up and then what I'm doing there is just adding a little bit of streaking just on the flat areas. Again, just adding to the depth and then just going in and cleaning up the front area. And then what you can do is actually manipulate the wash. As you can see here, it kind of reactivates when it's dry. And then you can blend it away. I'm just wondering whether it might've been better just to do it over a satin surface, but uh, it worked well on the gloss. If you do on a satin surface, you can blend it into the actual paintwork a little bit more. 
And there's a little bit of streaking. Look, to be honest, I don't think you're going to see. And then, again, with this fine brush, with a little bit of thinner, just going in and removing the excess from, from the cockpit tub. Exactly the same. Reactivating the the now dry wash and then just blending it into the into the surrounding paintwork. Okay, more paint chipping now, so just a bit of sponge with a bit of this is ammo of MIG steel. The excess has been removed on a, a piece of kitchen paper. And then I didn't want this to be too heavily chipped at all. So just very, very light. What I did want more chips on was the was the mat bin. So I kind of concentrated on that. So that picked up the paint quite nicely. But you just got to be careful. Just don't have too much paint on the sponge and just go a little bit careful. And then areas of really high wear, so the rudder pedals obviously, and then just in front of the, the rudder pedals, the foot rests. So what the pilot will do is he'll probably stand on the seat and then grip both sides with his hands and then lower himself down. So the seat's gonna get um, really nicely chipped, as are the kind of foot weld bits. But the sponge can't get in everywhere, so I just went in with a very fine brush, some of that steel paint, and then just painted in some of the chips, and then again, around some of the ridges and the highlights, it was painted in. And using these different techniques, you just you just pick the technique and the materials that, that suit the effect that you're trying to achieve best, really. So you can mix and match. And then I had actually used a pair of tweezers to try and activate it a little bit more and, and actually went through to the black undercoat. So just the paintbrush, you can go in and just, just correct all that. Probably wouldn't have seen it anyway, but hey. And then my favorite stage, a satin varnish over the top. And this, this just blends everything together. It almost acts as a bit of a filter really. And kills that shine, dulls everything down, but there's still a slight sheen, so it is going to pick up a little bit of light. It's not going to just kind of suck it all in and be a dark hole. And you see there, I've added the, the seat harness as well. And then while I had the, the varnish, I just went over the colour photo etch with it. Uh, on the instrument panel because it is quite speckly it's part of the printing process and if you just give it a coat of matte then it it it, it does a really good job of killing most of that speckly effect and then a bit of super glue here when i'm going to glue it on and you can see how the super glue fills the dials and that's going to simulate the glass really nicely without having to go in afterwards and trying to add a bit of gloss varnish or or even super glue into the into the bezels it works quite nicely that and then it's just a question of layering up the photo etched pieces and you can see the the light just about catching the the glass there and it's a really nice little instrument panel and then that gets mounted onto this mounting piece which then gets glued into the front of the cockpit tub and that thing right at the very front is actually the undercarriage mounting. And that's it. The cockpit is complete. So coming up in part three. Is uh, I glue the fuselage halves together with some rubberized black super glue for speed. I rescribe the panel lines in on the fuselage. Cockpit tub goes in underneath once the fuselage is ready. It's quite neat that. And we actually bend 
the radiator flaps, which is cool. And there we go. There she is, ready for paint. So that's what's coming up in part three. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.